This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week we've got a double feature for you as we take a pleasant dive down to the iconic vistas of Rapture in Bioshock 1 and 2. Don't try this at home, kids. Uh, <laughs> definitely don't try it at home. Don't try it underwater either. Let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down, and be sure to subscribe for more Firearms Expert Reacts as we'll be covering Bioshock Infinite, as well as new videos coming soon covering the Sabre Duels of Star Wars Jedi Survivor and much, much more. Right, over to Jonathan. A rapture reminder. The bottom of the ocean is Right, this revolver is pretty clearly based on the Webley series. It's the size and proportions of the Mark VI. It's not quite right though. The, the recoil shield at the rear of the cylinder is, is too enclosing, if that makes sense. And that is directly in your field of view from the first person view. Whereas from the side, it looks a pretty good approximation of a Webley. Of course, this is not, I don't think, our universe. If I remember rightly and so we have a lot of license there for things looking different anyway so i've taken some license and the example i've grabbed from the collection is not in fact a webley mark VI at all it isn't even the side stirrup latch system at all this is the webley price system which is a pinch to break so it's still break open and the reason i've shown it to you is it kind of belongs in a video game so although the revolver in this game is actually very plain, this is beautifully sort of blued until it's almost black mirror finish and then gold decoration all over it. It's just, it's beautiful, I think. I know it's not steampunk, but the word steampunk is <laughs> still inevitably springs to mind looking at that kind of thing. I don't know if it's the decoration or the slightly antiquated look of the thing, but it almost looks like it might be firing something other than just ordinary bullets, um, even though it doesn't. Trouble with revolvers in video games, if you want an upgrade system, how do you increase the size of a, say, a six shot cylinder? Well, you can't, you genuinely, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You've kind of got to build in, build in a revolver design that allows you to put, fit a bigger cylinder if you want to do it realistically, or maybe a like the chain pistol, something where you can bolt on capacity. And bolt on capacity is what they've done, but they've done it in a way that, I can't think of a way of it working. One way you could make it work is like the revolver feed on the original Dushka machine gun, recent Forgotten Weapons video on that one, we have one as well. So you have a revolver feed, but a belt going into it. That would be one way to do it. Here, it really just doesn't make any sense. It's kind of just fudged on. So this is a, a hyper stylized Thompson submachine gun, stylized to the point that it doesn't really, in detail, look anything like a Thompson. Uh, this is a Model 1928 with a drum from one of our Model 1921s. Just for effect, you may have glimpsed this in a recent thumbnail. I went with the 28 because our 21s don't have cuts compensators, and this game model is trying to represent the cuts compensator on the end to try to control recoil. The general silhouette is about right, and that's all most people are gonna care about. All the detail is, is incorrect. The cocking handle is on the side, more like an M1, but it does still have a slot in the top, nonetheless, which is interesting. And actually the drum on this gun is clearly meant to be the 50 rounder, because it's substantially smaller than this dinner plate in front of me. Oh, the rear sights on this thing are a bit of a weird extrapolation, I suppose, of what's on the real gun, which with the Model 21, Model 28, you, you have these big steel protectors, that's correct, although they're a bit too beefy on the model. And then there is a, when folded flat, there's a not very good little combat notch there, not great for a submachine gun by any means. That's because you flip up the whole thing and you have a, a highly adjustable, very long range rear sight there, adjustable out to 600 yards. But in any case, I think you'd want to flip it up on its minimum setting and use that aperture there for aiming. Um, so the sight on the real gun is also not great, not when folded flat, but it doesn't look like the one in the game with that weird spindly rear notch 
that's right at the rear of the protectors. We have cocking handle slots on both sides, cocking handles on both sides. Cartridge cases are ejecting from the left of the gun, kind of irrespective of where the cocking handle is. When the thing's cocked, it's to the rear, which it ought to be on an open bolt gun. But then when you attach the magazine, the bolt closes itself. It's all very fudged. Um, I know the, the Bioshock games are so good and well loved. I, I feel bad criticizing their guns, but they are not very realistic uh, from, from what I've seen so far. So I actually think this this sort of pimped version of the Thompson gun is more like it, strangely, because of the, the setting of the game, the sort of diesel punk shenanigans. When the gun's all tricked out with the glowing bits and the cables and the extra gubbins, it sort of rounds out the design and it looks better. Um, I wonder if it was designed as a, a sort of modified concept gun first and then retrofitted to a bare gun if you, if you see what i mean because that would explain why it's so skinny and odd looking when it doesn't have its uh, attachments that's just uh, speculation on my part but if you took a, a normal 28 model thompson and then attached all of this to it it would be hugely bulky and it might look a bit weird on screen so that would be that'd be one reason why they've taken artistic license with the base thompson gun Hey, this is very cool, actually. This is the Spencer or Spencer Roper system shotgun. Um, you can, although, well, some other early pump action guns have a dinky little pump grip like this as well. But if, if you see that and some two massive action bars, and especially the way they connect to the frame here with this, this rounded shape here, and then this distinctive bolt on the top that drops down, well, then you're looking at a Spencer. So this is the model 1882. So it's a great choice for a retro looking pump action. Of course, we then massively trick it out for the game with some modifications that don't necessarily make logical sense, but that's fine. Um, this is a fantasy game above all else. Uh, we've got electric ammunition, seen that in other, in other games as well, of course, delivering a different form of damage uh, or enhancing the damage somehow with electricity. And then the modified version I've just been looking at with, uh, there, there was a joke in the steampunk community <laughs> about uh, gluing some gears on it and calling it steampunk. Well, that's <laughs> almost, we, we've stuck some cogs in it and called it diesel punk. I think the cogs are meant to somehow enhance the rate of fire. How they would do that? Well, they wouldn't, would they? Exposed gear wheels in, in, embedded in the action of your shotgun means that something is going to stop working in your shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> but it does look quite cool as an upgrade. Right, this is an interesting one. This is a grenade launcher, obviously. Some sort of belt or, or multi-shot multi feed device on the side. And it's not exactly homemade, but it is what we would call craft produced, i.e. produced in a workshop or a very small factory, perhaps using some improvised components. This notably has a, a, a receiver, I think it is, that is labeled condensed milk. So it's been it's been made from tins of something. Oddly substantial tins of something, I will say, because there's no way a tin can is going to contain the pressure of firing any kind of projectile. So no, don't try this at home, kids. Uh, <laughs> definitely don't try it at home. Don't try it underwater either. But it's a very cool concept for a weapon, I think. The I'm a bit confused by the, the, the reload on this where we're twisting the whole weapon apart and then attaching it, and that is that is feeding in new rounds. The, the feed device would seem to be separate from the receiver, from the barrel unit. I'm not, it's not clear how that actually attaches together or how it relates to the magazine slash feed system. So it's, I think it's another fudged design, but it looks coherent and it seems like it might work if you don't look too closely, which is all you need.
This is quite an unusual flamethrower, except that it does other effects as well, or delivers other effects as well. Flamethrower mode is, I wouldn't say typical, because it's... It, does have a different sort of flavor to it if i can put it that way and then we have liquid nitrogen doing the same thing from the same gun only it's ammunition dependent as to whether it's flame or ice uh, of course living things would would suffer pretty badly from being frozen solid but uh, we don't worry about that in this case and as if two types of throwing wasn't enough there's also an electric gel attachment as well so and that's essentially turning it into a sort of cattle prod. So it's three weapons in one. I don't remember seeing anything quite like this before. Like a lot of the other weapons in the game, looks looks good, feels good. Not sure it stands up to too much scrutiny. Uh, we're attaching our um, fuel of whatever type to the, to, a, to the side with a valve. That doesn't seem to then get closed to attach it. So that seems to be slightly glossed over. Now, again, it makes sort of intuitive sense that you're attaching something, you're slapping something, then it works. It's just that if you think about it, it doesn't seem to make too much sense. I'm afraid I can't begin to work out how this rivet gun works. It's obviously a take on the, the classic nail gun. We think tend to think of Quake, don't we, for, for that? Um, or I do. And I suppose I didn't question it at, <laughs> at the time. Um, this one has additional moving parts. The, the railway or the locomotive style rod and, and wheel on the, on the top. I've just forgotten what they're called. I'm sure train enthusiasts in the comments will remind me. Um, looks really cool. I'm not really sure how the heck that would help fire rivets or shoot rivets at things. It does sort of feel right for the game though to have that weapon in the game and for it to work in the way that it does. Not too much to say about that except that we have an automatic ejecting magazine or ammunition container which is actually something we're going to cover on the Royal Armouries channel in the not too distant future so keep an eye out for that. Sawn off shotgun, uh, quite a, well, it's hard to see in first person view, but having seen it from the side, this thing has actually relatively long barrels for a sawn off. Taking a sort of firearm is never never a good idea, um, almost never. Nice to have a sawn off though in the game, it does somehow seem to make sense. And the stylistic changes bring it in line with the look of the game. So if this was just a Mad Max style sawn off shotgun, or even an old west coach gun with absolutely nothing different about it it might not fit so well but um we have got some additional pieces on here i couldn't tell you what they what they do or how they work i don't think this has been referenced off a real side by side sawn off the proportions of everything are are weird sort of exaggerated proportions really the sights are well a not really the sort of sights you have typically have on a shotgun anyway and b two rear sights um, there's no, no, a shotgun would typically have just a bead. Uh, a sawn off shotgun would have no sight on the front unless you welded one back on or something because it's been cut down. This has two little shallow notches, one at the front, one at the back. Doesn't make any sense for a sight. Probably better than no sight at all, depending on how they're set up, but you're not ideal because you won't be able to align them very efficiently. Now the ammunition type here, phosphorus buckshot, Dragon's Breath is a real shotgun round. And in fact, there is a Dragon's Breath buckshot round as well that contains actual projectiles and doesn't just attempt to set things on fire. I'm not sure that the Dragon's Breath buckshot existed when this game was first made. I could be wrong. It'd be quite entertaining if the game had anticipated something that then happened in real life. Normal Dragon's Breath uh, with the incendiary effect has been around for a lot longer than the game. God, take it. Now this is more like it. So I think the additional bits that were attached to the shotgun when I first saw it are brackets for attaching upgrades. Some sort of Tesla looking or Nixie tube type valve type things on the side. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. Different ammunition types, 
incendiary ammunition, normal buckshot, probably something else. And then what they've done for the capacity upgrades makes sort of more sense than the revolver does. <laughs> we have independent revolver cylinders for, of three rounds that have been inserted. So the breaches of the barrels have been chopped away. The standing breaches of the action are still there. And then we have revolving cylinders, one for each barrel. So we, we already have revolving shotguns. So it's not a problem to have rotating chambers with cartridges in them that align with the barrel and have the, the breech at the rear with the firing pin to fire the cartridge. And so you could you could probably make a version of this that would function. I don't know how it would automatically revolve the cylinders, and I certainly don't know how it would reload. Most plausibly, I suppose, you would replace this you'd have replaceable cylinders somehow. And yeah, it all sort of falls apart when you when you get into the detail of it. But as an upgrade to a fantasy shotgun, I like it. Obligatory Gatling gun, nothing wrong with that. One-handed, especially in some sort of 50 caliber cartridge type. This looks to be, again, craft produced, lots of flat angles, sheet metal, metal plates, metal tubes, and some weird broken off, rusty looking circular thing on the top. I haven't got much else to say about that one, to be honest. Um, no obvious way of aiming this thing. There's there's something on top of the gun, but the no no functional sights that I can see. And in fact, the way the way it has you have to hold it, there'd be no obvious way of aiming it. This is sort of an aiming technique as well in real life. In certain situations, at certain times of in the past, you simply look where your shots are going and adjust accordingly. Of course, in the game, you have a, a permanent reticle in the middle of the screen anyway, so that's not really a problem. This is a cool weapon, I think I can, I can safely say. Industrial diesel punky design, as most of the guns in the game are. This isn't a gun, though. This is a, a harpoon or spear gun. It's got some sort of motor for drawing back the, the mechanism uh, to store up the energy to then uh, release it somehow. Not quite clear how it's working, but it seems to make sense, like some of these other weapons. Not sure what the spinning... Uh, gear or wheel is near the muzzle of this thing, if you can call it a muzzle. The really interesting part is the trap ammo. Ah, I see. So the, the trap spears are not trailing a cable. They are magically projecting one after they've hit their target, which makes a bit less sense, but I'm sure has a, a valid gameplay reason. <laughs> And a fairly conventional, if I can use that word for, for this game, which I feel like I can't, uh, <laughs> grenade launcher. Distinctive design, very industrial feeling, sounding. Awful lot of recoil built in, although um, a number of the weapons do have perhaps excessive recoil. The revolver is, is very snappy seeming, um, but this thing launching essentially a bomb, yeah, it's going to have a decent amount of recoil. Uh, we, they had to develop a, a special type of ammunition to allow um, a con an actual shoulder-fired grenade launcher. Prior to that, you were bracing the butt of your rifle with grenade launcher on it into the ground in various ways. Otherwise, the recoil would very likely break your shoulder. So a projectile of that size and mass is, yeah, you need some way of managing the recoil. The game doesn't worry about that, It just, but it does show you that you are chucking something with a significant amount of mass and indeed uh, explosive potential. That's it. That's the guns of Bioshock 1 and 2. Um, hopefully we'll come back and do Infinite because that's the only one I've actually played all the way through. But I very much enjoyed taking a look. Uh, very distinctive art style for those games. Really, really good to, to watch. As always, you can check out what we do here at the Royal Armouries over on our, our website, our social media accounts. You can also head over to our YouTube channel for more gun nonsense from me. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>